Good morning, gentlemen. Of course, the news of the day would be the uh, investigation into the rape allegations against St Kilda player Stephen Milne. Uh, very disturbing to suggest that there was improper influence put onto the investigators. But the first thing we have to work out is, um, did the investigators fall for this pressure? Did they not do their job? No, both investigators said they did. In fact, the, the second one who came out on Channel 9 last night said we couldn't have done a better brief if we tried. The matter went to the Office of uh, Public Prosecutions where it was reviewed and a decision was made not to prosecute. It wasn't a cover-up. Uh, it went to the appropriate people who looked at the brief of evidence as it was done and said that they believed that their criteria is it must be more likely than not that you will get a successful prosecution. That's the rule for the DPP, and on this occasion he felt the brief fell short. Was there any suggestion of sabotage? No. So what is this influence? This is what we don't know. If it was a superior putting pressure on them, it's a disgrace? Or was it just good old boys from other stations who happen to follow St Kilda ring up saying, oh, they're not bad blokes, do the right thing? That is absolutely improper, but it didn't impact upon the investigation. There is uh, allegations that, that this matter was put before an assistant commissioner. Curiously, that assistant commissioner has not been named. So did the actual investigators go and see the assistant commissioner and said we were pressured? Or was it a case they went to somebody else who said, I will raise this? with the Assistant Commissioner, but I would imagine that these investigators were told, go and do your duty, uh, and now it's a matter of finding out who else was involved. The Regional Assistant Commissioner of the time was Trevor Thompson, straight as a gun barrel and a stickler for procedure. So um, there's a lot left in this as to who was told and what they did. Now, for example, were, did these investigators go to a superior who then counselled them just do your duty and don't worry about the others? Was there, I mean, clearly the matter should have been put before the Ethical Standards Department and these people are dealt with. Did the investigators name them at the time? Did they just say, we, you know, we want you to know generally that we feel that we're under pressure? But uh, it impacts probably inappropriately on the person who was accused in that they're there appears to be no extra evidence whatsoever. You've got to separate this from two things. One is the rape investigation that was done according to the investigators to the best of their ability and a appropriate decision was made not to prosecute. And the second, which is a totally different investigation which now has been launched, is whether or not those uh, two investigators were improperly pressured and the leaks of their investigation along the way to the media. What happens next then, Sly? What, well, what, what, because eventually it'll come back to the Chief Commissioner, Simon Overland. He'll be seen to be having to do something. So what is the next something that happens? Well, this is an Ethical Standards Department investigation and an Office of Police Integrity investigation. The OPI, as we know, have uh, substantial powers. So they will do their investigation and they will either report uh, independently through Parliament with a separate report or back to ESD. But, of course, it, it's a no-brainer that there must, at some point, be uh, a public statement exactly what happened in this sorry saga because you understand that police are like everyone else. They're really interested in high-profile cases. So they ring up and they say, what's going on if it's a celebrity, you know, if it's a footballer? And there have been previous occasions where things have been covered up for footballers. There was one who was picked up drink driving and he was well over the, over the odds, but that was brushed under the carpet many years ago by an officer who didn't even back for that club, but uh, every September someone would arrive and say the inspector would like his fi grand final tickets. I need to go back to the St Kilda issue, the allegations from former police, two former police now, that the, there were attempts by senior police to influence their investigations into rape allegations against St Kilda players, Stephen Milne and Lee Montagna. Channel 9 started this. The deeper we dug yesterday, the worse it got. Now, that's not to say that Milne and Montagna have done anything wrong, not at all. But the allegations that police tried to influence this investigation are quite outrageous. And the police since, the police defence has been contradictory and defensive. At the very least, it seems somebody somewhere is stuffed up. Uh, the, the officer says influence was exerted on him to try to get him to go easy. He did report that, and it seems very little was done. It's claimed he talked to the head of the sexual crimes unit and also his assistant commissioner, who we are told was Assistant Commissioner Trevor Thompson, who is now uh, retired from the force. 
But we've got to know what was done, whether the claims were taken seriously, whether they happened. There could be criminal charges here. If somebody did try to get the investigating police to go easy because they were St Kilda supporters, there could be criminal charges. But that's only part of it. The Office of Police Integrity is involved now, and in their normal fashion, they're not being at all helpful uh, in terms of what they're doing. And it doesn't give me much confidence, given their record. The OPI uh, couldn't investigate a dog walking down the street. But that's where it sits. The, the broader issue is this. The police will be dealt with, and it smells of a stuff up. The broader issue is whether the brief collected on Milne and Montagna was compromised. The DPP made a decision not to prosecute, which is proper. The key question is whether he did that with a, a brief compromised by influence or not. And there is no evidence or suggestion I can see that it was compromised. Assistant Commissioner Steve Fontana spoke to me about it yesterday, and nobody else. He did no other interviews. But he made it obvious that the case could still be reopened. If there was interference with the investigation, well, then we will have to look at it again. Well, that's not entirely correct. I mean, if there was interference that had any effect, they've got to look at it again. Uh, look at the interference, look at the allegations of interference. The key question that has to be asked to the police who investigated this case and now make the allegations, was their brief compromised by the influence? It was the, it was the, if the case, if it was, if it was compromised, then the case may need to be reopened. If it wasn't, then it doesn't necessarily have to be reopened. Either way, for these players and the police, the public must now know what has happened and quickly.